Yeah. All right. Welcome to Wholesaling on Demand. We are jumping in. We have a live interview with Matt Vukovic out of Indiana. Matt's a wholesaler. He's been in real estate for just 18 months, started by reading books and listening to podcasts. His company's done over 100 deals in 18 months alone with a million dollars in gross profit since entering in business May of 2017. He attributes his success to great coaching and the grace of God for rescuing him from his former life. Matt spends his free time playing basketball, hanging with, with friends, and staying involved in the community. Matt, welcome on board, bro. Awesome. Hey, Ben. How you doing? Good to be here. Absolutely. <laughs> doing well, man. So we're going to switch it up a little bit today. Um, I know that you and me share a very similar story. So we'll touch on some wholesaling, you know, and some get some growth tips as far as that goes. But I want to dive a little bit into the struggle and that how that's how that has caused perseverance in our lives. <clears throat> um, so first question is, is there a, a specific story from your life that resonates with you that's had a significant impact? OK, yeah, I mean, I think the biggest story in my life and, and what I feel like I'm called to share with others is just overcoming adversity of the past. Um, a little bit about myself. I was born and raised in Kalamazoo, Michigan, um, raised in an amazing family, great parents. Um, great values, but I just always um, tried to run the opposite direction and and fight and fight and push back. And um, long story short, I uh, ended up in jail a couple times uh, through college. And in 2014, I uh, actually ended up getting uh, incarcerated for almost three years um, for drug related crimes. And I actually just ended up getting out of work release uh, last year uh, in 2017 in April, um, started wholesaling um, in May. I had a family member, my uncle, uh, who did it out in Phoenix. So it kind of inspired me to get started and learn and, and grow and been off to the road ever since then. So I love it. I love it. Yeah, man. I, I truly believe that the struggles and hardships in our life bring out our character more than any other point, you know, more exceedingly than any other point, because sometimes you got to go through that fire, you know, just like metal's got to get pushed through the fire to strip out all the dross, all the impurities, right? And it comes out on the other side of that, a pure metal, right? It's just, it's so powerful what hitting rock bottom can do because Again, it takes a, a complete heart shift, right? It takes a change yeah. in posture, <clears throat> and a person's not truly going to change until they're ready to, right? Mm -hmm. But I believe that, you know, through that fight, through the struggle, that you can come out, man, a fine jewel. So I love it, man. I love it. Yeah. Kind of touching on the same thing, um, you know, looking at your, your past failures, how have they contributed to your overall success in life and business? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, I think I'm, I'm really blessed to have uh, the story that I do and to be able to share it with other people. And I, and I really feel like that's um, that's what I'm called to do is share that that story of, of overcoming adversity and just being at being at rock bottom, um, incarcerated and just having nowhere to go. Uh, but up, it was, man, it just really brought me to my knees, humbled me. And, you know, through the, through the grace of God, you know, he, he rescued me from that and, and helped me overcome that and, and get to where I am today. And I you know, still struggle day to day with, with different things, but, um, you know, with God there with me, it, it makes everything a whole lot easier. Absolutely. <clears throat> One thing I like to touch on a lot, man, we all deal with a battle every mm -hmm. single day. Right. We have a battle within our own minds and you got the good angel and the bad angel on your shoulder. It's completely up to you which voice you're going to listen to at the end of the day. Right. You can listen to the voices in the crowd that are telling you you'll never be good enough, you know, or you can't accomplish this. Or you can listen to, you know, the voice of faith, the voice of reason, the voice that's telling you that you can do anything you set your mind to. Right. Because I believe that your mind is like a magnet and what you think about expands. And once you realize the power within 
your own imagination, man, the sky is truly the limit. It truly is. So I love it, man. Um, looking back, if you were to give your younger self one piece of advice, what would that be? Yeah. That's a good question. One piece of advice. I, I think it's I think it's all about the people um, that you surround yourself with. Uh, that's that's been the biggest <clears throat> the biggest thing for me. You know, when I um, as soon as I got out, uh, I realized I needed to change up my circle of friends. The people I've been hanging out with, a lot of them were still involved in the same lifestyles and and doing the same things. And I knew I had to surround myself with positive um God fearing people who were going to make an impact on my life. So biggest piece of advice is search out people who are where you want to be. So whether that's spiritually, financially, in business, you know, work out how, what kind of physical shape you're in, but find someone who is where you want to be and just go up to them and say, Hey, you know, I, I really admire you and, and what you've achieved. And, and I want to be like you, how, what can I do to serve you or add some value to your life and be able to spend more time with you and getting people like that in my life is, is absolutely what's, what's changed it. That's huge. I wholeheartedly agree, man. Best thing that I ever did was change up my environment, you know, transplanted yeah. from New Mexico, getting away from old influences, you know, after doing enough time behind bars and experiencing that, you know, one would think, that you know you're going to really change and transform and i believe that you can still do it but again your problems are always going to follow you right no matter what so you can try to move yourself but until you're truly ready you're not going to make that change right but again i think changing your environment and surrounding yourself with a community that's going to help to grow and nourish you you know it's like planting small seeds you know and the people you surround yourself are watering those seeds along the way so if you're surrounded by, you know, negativity and people that are making those wrong choices, then it's going to have a significant impact on your growth. Right. But again, it takes dirt for the for those seeds to grow. So sometimes you got to go through that struggle. you got to th go through the opposition and eventually you're going to sprout up on the other side, man, much stronger. Absolutely. Yeah, and that, it reminds me of a book I read called uh, Why Willpower Doesn't Work. And there's a lot of fantastic points in it, but the big one I got from it was, you know, everybody, everything's all about self-help now, but what you need to change is your environment and set yourself up for success. So putting, changing your environment to encourage you to succeed and making it easier is a huge difference. So I know one thing for me, I struggle with eating healthy throughout the week, running around on appointments, uh, making calls, just being all over town. So every Sunday, uh, get, have my meals prep for the entire week um, and just set myself up for success to, to eat healthy throughout. So there's a lot of different ways you can apply it, but yeah. So you're still pretty active in your business. Are you, do you have an acquisition manager or are you yeah. wholeheartedly just committed pounding that ground? What is, what does that look like as far as your, your structure? Yeah, no, good question, Ben. Yeah, it's, I'm definitely still acquisitions and dispositions right now. So i um, I'm working on hiring for those two positions. I've actually got a couple interviews today um, that I'm looking forward to as, as well as tomorrow. Um, but right now, how my structure is, I have a lead manager, uh, Lizzie. So she takes all um, incoming calls from all the leads and sets all my appointments, does all the follow-up calls. Uh, I've got a full-time virtual assistant, Marion. Uh, she does contracts. Uh, she's in charge of marketing. Um, list organization, uh, just a lot of the day-to-day -day activities. Um, and then I've got a local lady, Janet, who makes all our bandit signs and uh, writes up envelopes and, and sends out letters and another guy, Josh, who puts the signs up. But. Good deal. Is your leads manager here in the States? Oh, uh, she's not, no, she's in Costa Rica. Okay. Um, actually originally from Indiana. So there's oh, wow. a company, it's, I don't know, they were, Outbounders, they're mm. so. If you message me, I could tell, get you contact info for them. But they essentially hire people from um, the states who now live in Costa Rica. So she just moved there from Indiana like two years ago. So it was really a really a perfect fit. That's awesome. And so the pay because 
economy out there is a lot different. They don't require quite as much pay by the hour as they might in the States, right? And that's kind and of the, the benefits to working with that for, for those that aren't as familiar with VAs. Yeah. Well, and you, you would think that, um, but with her being so my lead manager in Costa Rica, apparently from what I understand is it's pretty similar values and prices. So she actually makes, um, I mean, less than what she would make if she lived here in the States, right. but paying the hiring service and everything, it ends up being about the same sure. as I would be somebody here. And with my virtual assistant, I used a hiring service for them as well. My outdesk, they're, they're awesome. And she is fantastic. So again, I mean, she makes, you know, with what I'm paying to the service, it's a little bit higher, but right. to have a committed virtual assistant who's been at the company for years and is there every day. And, you know, there's value to me there uh, versus trying to, you know, track somebody down for a couple bucks an hour. It's Absolutely. I cannot say enough about virtual assistance. You know, a lot of people might not be as familiar. I know it's pretty common in the real estate space. Um, we got two time full two full-time VAs out of the Philippines and they are rock stars. You know, they get straight to work, man. And any menial tasks that you might need to kind of push on or answer phone calls, they're on it. I think, you know, when the time is right to kind of expand, it it adds tremendous value to, to your business for sure. Yeah, that's the first hire. As yep. virtual. All day. What is the most valuable advice for someone just starting out in real estate, you know, someone maybe just dabbling in wholesaling, what would you, what's your best advice for them? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, and I think it kind of depends on the person. So for some people I would recommend um, getting coaching. If you finding, if you're struggling to get started, finding somebody who's already done it or a program and just taking it step by step on how to do it. Um, that's not necessarily what I did. I, I started out just, listening to podcasts and reading books and just going out there and getting it. So the, it sounds so cliche, but the, the biggest piece of advice is just to go out there and do it. Just know that you're going to make mistakes. You're going to screw up. I screw up every day. And that's just how you're going to learn. I just, I wanted to get in there and do it. Just implementation. Uh, don't get caught in analysis paralysis. Just go out there and, and make it happen and, and learn as you go. Yep. It doesn't get much simpler than that. You know, we all make mistakes every day, but I love that. Learn as you go. Because, again, if you try to learn, you, you touched on analysis paralysis. You're trying to drink from a fire hose, right, stepping in it, into a new industry, trying to learn all the ins and the outs. Um, I think a mistake that a lot of new wholesalers do, a lot of new people in any industry, for that matter, is they try to take everything on at once, right? And they become paralyzed because you're trying to focus on so many things at one time. There's a story, I think John Maxwell tells it. He says, you know, when, when the lion trainer is walking into a lion's den, he has a, a sidearm at his hip. But the most valuable tool, the most important weapon that he has stepping into that lion's den is a four-legged stool. Because if the lion starts, you know, coming at him, he'll thrust that stool at the lion's face. And the lion becomes paralyzed because it tries to focus on all four limbs at once. Right? Hmm. So you think about our journey in a very similar way that when you're trying to focus on so many different shiny objects, you just you become paralyzed and you get nothing done. You know, and I think that's a big mistake that I made early on, too, was, you know, you'd start some direct mail, but Google AdWords sounds really nice. And then, you know, cold calling is like the new hype. You know, everyone's on cold calling and I'm sure the cycle just kind of turns around. Right. But I think starting out. Focusing on that one thing, right? Becoming an expert at that one lead source, that one marketing source, become great at that. And then when you can systematize it and hand it off to someone else, like your VAs, then you can step onto a new platform, you know? But until you're ready and until you master that one lead source, I think it's important to really focus on one thing. So that's good. That's yeah. Good. No, I couldn't agree more. So you've, uh, you've been hitting it for 18 months. You've experienced major wins. Let's talk about that transition of how you've had to develop your mindset from coming behind bars, you know, getting released into the, the, new, the real world, having to kind of rework your mindset. Um, what are the largest struggles that you've dealt with upon entering back into society? 
Okay. Yeah. Good question. I mean, I, I was fortunate enough to have some transitional period between work release and house arrest and, and getting integrated. Um, that, that was definitely a big help. Um, I think the biggest thing and the biggest struggle for me is still um, keeping those, keeping those past demons away. So making sure I'm spending time with the right people and, and doing the right things. Cause you know, the enemy's always coming back for you and he, he knows your oh, yeah. weaknesses and, and, and how to get to you. And that's just continuing to fight, fight him off and um, surround myself with the right people. That's, um, that's definitely been the biggest, biggest struggle. Yep. I, I hear that. I hear that. And it starts with fighting your battles on your knees sometimes, you know, just surrendering, giving thanks for each day and asking God for guidance, man. That's one thing that I found pretty, very common in, in this space. And what I love so much about real estate is you're surrounded by so many like-minded people. You know, m many of them are people of faith. You know, some are not. It's, it's great. You know, we all have different talents, beliefs and all that. But one thing I've noticed is every person is serious about personal growth, you know, and they're taking life serious because our life truly is a gift, right? We're here one day and the next day you're gone. It's like, <laughs> you know, I'm trying to grasp at the wind, but I just, I love the community, man. I can't say enough about it. And again, you meet so many incredible people. Me and Matt linked up right before the Wholesaling Inc. conference um, through Facebook. And it's crazy what social media will do as far as connecting people. Um, but we just, you know, really got down to it and we share similar stories, similar messages. And I believe that our story is one of the most powerful assets that we have. So I'm, I'm really glad that you came on today, man, to share some of your story. Yeah. Um, I mean, I'm, um, a little bit on what you just said, how, as far as how we met, but that is, um, you know, having the, the courage, what, what happened was you had shared a, a Facebook post about, um, about your journey, you know, how you had been incarcerated and, and where you are now. And um, I saw that scrolling through the feed and was able to say, you know, that's exactly what I've been through. You know, I'm, I hope we can uh, work together and, and make some headway. And, and hopefully this is an opportunity to share my story uh, with other people. And hopefully that opens up some doors to, you know, share, share the word and, and meet some new people. So absolutely. absolutely. Yeah, man. So what is your favorite quote and why? My favorite quote and why. Hmm. That is uh that's a good question. What is my favorite quote and why? It's tough. There's so many good ones. I know, I know. I, I now uh, I feel like I should have something written on my on my dry erase board. <laughs> I go to every time. Yeah. Um Man, I can't. I couldn't even tell you here on the spot, man. I'm not. Uh, I'm not 100 percent sure. Let's, um, let's jump into your, the best book that you've read, and what's the number one thing that you've learned through that? Okay. Yeah. Well, of course. Um, of course, I gotta say the Bible, number one. So, um, but with with that being said, um, right now it's it's hard to say the best book you ever read because you have recency recency bias. Um, but one of my favorite books that I'm reading right now, it's called uh, Live the Let Go Life. Um, it's right here by Joseph Prince. It is a phenomenal, phenomenal book. Um, and it's just all about giving, giving everything up, your worries, your stress, your anxiety. And that is what I struggle with. And I know a lot of re other entrepreneurs and real estate investors battle um, it's just constantly being stressed and going to bed stressed, waking up stressed, what to do about it. And reading that book has just totally changed my life. Just the concept is so simple, but it's just letting it all go and saying, God, you know, help me out here. I need you. You know, this is what's going on. What, you know, what can I do? And just trusting him to take care of it. So I love it. You got to make your request known. Yeah, Absolutely. What's the best way for people to find you online for any viewers? You know, Facebook What's the best way to be found. Yeah, absolutely. You can find me on uh, Facebook, Matt, M-A-T-T, Vukovic, V-U-K-O-V-I-C-H. Um, you can message me if you have any questions. You can email me, Matt, at Matt buys Indiana houses, uh, dot com. So always love uh, being able to share with other people, reach out and 
Yeah. I love it, man. I love it. Well, thank you once again for coming on, man. It's been a, it's been a pleasure to have you on board. No problem. Awesome. Thanks for having me, Ben. Yeah, bro. Let's connect and let's take this industry by storm, man. Many so, more successes. Yeah. All right.